oh hello there welcome to another Sunday these weeks keep flying by coming up today we have something extra special happening because it's my birthday today yes happy birthday to me and of course mr. Steve will be here as well but the big question is where are we at the moment can you guess all of that coming up today and of course you are more than welcome to join in on the live chat as well after all it's a Sunday afternoon here in the UK it's just after two o'clock it's my birthday and this is live English Do 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 oh my goodness here we go ah it's that time of year again where I cry and cry because I'm another year older <laughs> why does it keep happening and why does it seem to keep happening faster that's my big question hi everybody this is mr. Duncan in England how are you today are you okay I hope so are you happy are you happy well are you happy it's a happy day today because well for me it's a happy day because it's my birthday thank you very much for all of your wonderful messages I I was going to put some of the messages on the screen that I'd received through my email address and also on Facebook the problem is I have so many there are so many messages now waiting for me on my phone that I actually can't go through them one by one there are around about 150 messages waiting for me so unfortunately I might not be able to go through them individually today for which I apologize although having said that there is another way for you to send a greeting you can send your live greetings yes we have live greetings on the live chat and of course I'm here today it's mr. Duncan that's my name and my game is teaching English I've been doing this on YouTube for over 11 years can you believe it 11 years I've been on YouTube I've been on YouTube longer than many of the big YouTube celebrities it's true and here I am now in my 12th year of doing this of course there are lots of things to show you let's have a look outside the window because to be honest the weather isn't very good today <laughs> there it is it's very wet very damp and we had a lot of rain earlier and you can see in the distance it is at this very moment raining in the distance looking out and if we have another look in another direction this is the opposite direction you can see also there is a lot of rain forming in the sky it is very very damp sadly we won't be able to go outside to celebrate my birthday I was really hoping that we'd be able to go outside and have a little birthday party in the garden but sadly because the weather is so I want to say unpleasant but it isn't unpleasant it's just very wet that's all having said that oh we had a lovely holiday thank you very much to all those who sent messages concerning the holiday that we had of course we weren't here on Wednesday but I did leave a little live message from the place we were staying at we will be seeing a little bit more of that later on because I have done some filming yes even though I was on holiday even though I was taking my holiday I still did some filming I still did some work so my holiday was very busy 
i did manage to relax with mr steve he was there as well and i also did a little bit of work as well for which i apologize i'm always being told off because it, it appears as if i do too much i might be the busiest youtube english teacher in the world i think so i'm always busy doing something so here i am now live to prove it to you oh yes we had a super time the weather wasn't too bad i thought the weather was going to be bad but we did have some nice weather so we have something special coming up in around about 10 minutes for you to watch and that is something i filmed during my little break and we have mr steve yes mr steve will be here at around about half past two Mr. Steve will be here in around about 15 minutes time. I don't know what it is but whenever you go away especially if you go away to a place where the the air is very different it always affects your body in, in in strange ways I've noticed that so since being away we went to Wales and then we went to the beach we will be taking a look at the beach video next week but today we'll be looking at some other video footage that i filmed with mr steve we went on a big walk we walked across the dam at lake vernwy in wales and also we did some other things as well that is coming up but of course there is one thing i'm forgetting i am forgetting all about the live chat how can i do that <gasps> i'm so naughty so there it is the live chat is very busy for those who want to leave a message you can but the big question is who was first on the live chat look at all those messages how am i going to get through these messages today there are so many messages alam gear hello alam gear you were first on the live chat well done i think that deserves a round of applause well done alan gear you were first on the live chat and also tomek tomek was second on the live chat today also julie hello julie and francisco is here as well oh look there it is my first birthday greeting on the live chat saturino thank you very much for wishing me happy birthday thanks a lot yes it is my birthday today it's very strange that our normal broadcast day is also my birthday so here we go <laughs> i am officially another year older today oh my goodness also huang is here olga hello to everyone and happy birthday to mr duncan happy birthday to a person that is charming talented and witty do you mean me that doesn't sound like me Tomek, thank you very much for your birthday greeting. Abai Dulla is here, also Swan, Olga. Hello, Mr. Duncan, and happy birthday. Thank you, Olga. I think I might spend the next 25 minutes reading all of these messages. I have I've had so many messages come through on my phone this morning. <laughs> it was hot. When I picked my phone up this morning, it was actually hot. From all the messages that were coming through 
alan gear yes thank you very much you are you are first today and also hello to chris morales or chris morales hello duncan happy birthday and lots of love blessings and abundant health <gasps> i hope so i hope so sue jean is here hello and happy birthday thanks pedro belmont is here thank you pedro for saying hello i am here feeling very refreshed after my lovely holiday we went to wales not very far away from where we live and then we went to the beach <gasps> oh goodness me there is nothing more refreshing than sea air i must say agnieszka is here happy birthday oh agnieszka is also watching in wales if i remember right i think you are watching in cardiff i want to say cardiff marie verne is here as well happy birthday thank you very much Belo belarusia is here thank you for your lovely birthday greetings not only here but also on my facebook page as well jeff one z is here with lots of birthday cakes i'm not sure if i can eat all of those cakes if i ate those i think i would get even fatter happy birthday anyway from jeff thank you very much i do appreciate all of your lovely messages not only here but also on my mobile phone as well <laughs> i think it will take the rest of the day for me to look through all of those messages so thank you once again i am overwhelmed and mr steve brought a lovely gift and he he gave it to me this morning and i was quite overwhelmed i might show you later what mr steve bought for my birthday i will show you a little bit later but it was very surprising i don't know how he does it mr steve always manages to surprise me with a wonderful birthday gift i am so lucky rosa says hello mr duncan and mr steve and everybody happy birthday mr duncan today is also father's day in brazil so happy father's day to all the dads watching in brazil Zina or lena is here otherwise known as mr vodka happy birthday mr duncan i hope you have a good day today i think i will yes so far it's been a wonderful day and having you here with me to share my birthday has made the day complete patricia is here watching in france sir j watching from ukraine thank you very much for your birthday greeting as well lots of celebrating yes we had a little celebration this morning and we are going to have one later today as well sukat hello sukat have a happy birthday thank you very much i will yes it is the 12th of august and it is my birthday here in the uk we call this particular date the glorious 12th because today marks the beginning of the grouse shooting season this is when people start shooting a certain type of game bird a game bird called the grouse and they call it the glorious 12th of course it's not very glorious for the grouse julie g is saying hello to one of the other chatters that's nice happy birthday from obidullah thanks a lot connell is here connell we were talking about you just a few moments ago we were asking each other mr steve and myself we were asking is connell a teacher and we we couldn't remember also it is connell's birthday as well it is my brother's birthday oh sorry my brother's son it's his birthday he is six years old so your nephew is six today well can i say happy birthday to your nephew connell thank you very much for that vitas is here saying happy birthday 
the dude is here hello the dude what an interesting and intriguing name you have moritz is watching in austria mr steve will be here soon with his register and he has a little surprise for you is this live fake or not no abdullah it is not fake it is live as live can be so abdullah just to prove that this is live i'm saying hello to you now at 25 minutes past two on a sunday afternoon it's my birthday today yeah 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 <laughs> tom x says i'm raising a glass to celebrate your birthday thank you mr duncan i don't care if it is too early well it's never too early to celebrate Louis oh Louis says happy birthday you are a young man only 35 years old I wish I wish I was 35 years old can I just say now I really do wish <laughs> so much that I am 35 I'm not 35 years old I'm a few years older than that that's how old I am today can you believe it because to be honest I can't <laughs> I really can't believe it back to the live chat because it's looking very busy happy birthday from blue thunder also Anna thank you very much Rita says we are happy to see you again no problem mr. Duncan happy birthday from Axunth. hello Axunth. I don't recognize your name is it your first time here please let me know Jamelia Jamelia is here to say happy birthday thank you very much Jamelia for that and welcome once again yes I had a lovely break my holiday was lovely Mr. Steve was relaxing as well which is very unusual because it's very rare for Mr. Steve to actually relax and take a rest he doesn't do it very often to be honest thank you Alex Alex McWild says happy birthday to you as well thank you very much yes we are live right now live from England Gretel happy birthday Mr. Duncan thanks a lot so many people I, I can't begin to tell you how how moved I feel and how touched I am by all of your greetings it's incredible I think I have about 200 messages on my phone <laughs> all of them come all of them have come through during the past couple of hours incredible hello it is wet here where Gretel is so Gretel says it is wet Niao Niao is that is that hello is it does that mean hello maybe hello also to Julia I hope all your birthday wishes and dreams come true thank you very much and please continue teaching English I will I have no intention of stopping I'm still young I'm still fit and I'm still very very enthusiastic happy birthday mr. Duncan from Victor thank you Victor Kiem hello to you oh my goodness so many people are here <laughs> I can't believe how many people are saying hello now it's incredible it would appear that every week we get more and more people on the live chat if it is your first time please let me know Carrie hello Carrie hello everybody happy birthday mr. Duncan my birthday is also coming up it is so close to ah, we are not spring chickens anymore yes we are not spring chickens so a spring chicken is a very young chicken so if you are not a spring chicken it means you are getting old so yes you are right Carrie or Carrie I am no longer a spring chicken isn't that sad 
I am getting older as are you so the live chat is busy we will go back to the live chat a little bit later on because we have something else to do now would you like to have a look at some of the things we have been doing on our holiday so here we go <laughs> as promised here is a little view of what we did during our break in Wales <laughs> Mr. Steve has been working out our finances for the year and apparently because of all the money that I've earned from YouTube this year from the generous people at YouTube and of course Google we can actually invest our money into something quite amazing Oh Mr. Duncan I've been looking at luxury yachts Luxury yachts. luxury yachts just for you and me mr. Duncan imagine the fantastic lessons that we can produce on board our hundred foot luxury yacht Wow it sounds amazing we'll we go to Monaco we can sail all around the world on our luxury yacht from all the profits that you've made from your YouTube channel this yes. year mr. Duncan anyway there's a nice boat yard here I've been to speak to the owners they've got a fantastic yacht for sale oh okay would you like to see it yes I would I'm, I'm getting very excited it's right behind you mr. Mr. Duncan, I'll let me show you. What do you think? It just needs a bit of paint. That 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 is not a luxury yacht. It's all we can afford, Mr. Duncan. I've just realised it's all we can afford. I'm sorry. I've just suddenly realised we are not making as much money from this YouTube channel as I thought because Google and YouTube don't pay as much money, unfortunately. Well, there's an answer to that. There is. We'll take a nice walk up that hill and make another lesson straight away. And then we'll be millionaires. That's a nice <laughs> idea, a very interesting idea. So now we are going for a walk up that hill over there and I have a feeling it's going to be very tiring so we will see you later. Mr. Duncan, don't take so long. This is a lovely spot. Hurry up. Oh, hello. The things I have to put up with. Look how slowy Mr. Duncan is coming up there. I told you he needs to get fit. We're trying to get him to lose weight as well. As you know, don't say anything. Shh. He's a bit sensitive about his weight. Oh, Mr. Duncan, you're here. How wonderful. This is a lovely spot, you know. It's a bit exhausting coming up that steep hill. Oh, this this is this is so tiring, Steve. There's a, there is a bench over there. Can can we go and sit down? Yes. Okay. Let's go and sit down on that lovely, inviting bench, showing that fantastic view of the yes, lake. Please. Oh, hello there. We are on a lovely walk today. We're taking a nice walk, but we are having a little rest at the moment. Mr. Steve has just finished eating his peanut bar there we go there bit we of go. energy bit of energy because uh, we always like to take uh, some food with us and have a nice rest don't we mr duncan well, look what i've got here this is the uh, instruction it's a booklet 
uh, on all the walking trails at Lake Vernwy. That's the place that we are at. And that's the, the most amazing thing about this area. There are so many places to actually walk around. It's huge. Look at all those walking trails. Today we there are one to, there are five walking trails. They're all colour coded. Yeah. <laughs> and today we are taking the the Lechwad Du Trail. Oh yeah, that's, that's great. I can't wait to see the subtitles <laughs> for that. <laughs> that's Welsh, by the way. And it's the red route. We're taking the red route. The red, red route. for danger. If you are going to go in any direction, always follow the red route. But it says here, this is a steady climb and it gives stunning high views looking down on the lake and access to the hills, moorlands, forests and fields. It says there's a moderately steep hill. Moderately. We've just come up. So we've walked for around about three miles and I I'm guessing we haven't got much further to go. Uh, let's have a look. There's just another uh, six miles to go. Six miles? I'm not going six miles. Look, you're trying to lose weight, Mr Duncan. Look, this is what we've come on this walk for to help you get fit and lose weight. I am losing weight. See I haven't given him a peanut bar, I've just um, kept them all for myself. During this walk I have lost weight and also the will to live. <laughs> well the only weight you're losing is because you keep losing bits of equipment. <laughs> Look what it says here you see walking it gives you some very some smart pieces of advice before you set off on your walk. These are the things that you must bear in mind, you must yes. think about. You must think about these things before you go on a walk. For example... Number one, wear strong shoes or walking boots. Check. Check. Tick that one off. Take warm and waterproof clothing. Oh. I've got my warm clothing. Steve's got some warm clothing, I haven't. I'm ah, just, but I'm... look. I've got a rain poncho, a oh. rain poncho. <laughs> what's a what's a poncho? It's a uh, look there we go. There's a picture of a lovely lady. Yes. Can't you describe it? It's a plastic waterproof film covering that if we get caught in a shower, <laughs> we put this poncho on which is just sort of just covers you. It's basically a plastic bag. Plastic bag that, that goes put over your head. That goes over you, but normally a poncho is something you wear loose over your body. That's so it. you put it over your head and then it just covers your body. Uh, if you if you remember in Star Wars, Luke Skywalker wore a poncho. But Star but apparently Wars. apparently most of the scenes were deleted with him wearing the poncho, but there are a couple of scenes in Star Wars where Luke Skywalker is wearing his poncho. Always have to get something in about Star Wars. It's so boring, Mr. Of Duncan. Of course. Anyway, that's that. That's waterproof clothing. Watch out. Watch out for service vehicles on forest tracks. Yes, don't get run over. Don't get run over. It's very nope. important. I uh, can't see any service vehicles on that track. So I think we're all right for now. So unless they're electric, we'll be able to hear them. Keep on the roads and footpaths. Yes, well, we've got directions there. We are on the road and footpath. There is the road behind us. Can you see the road? There it is. Yeah. Keep dogs under control. That's it. Or, we... in, or in this case, I have to keep Steve under control. Yes, exactly. Are you saying I'm a dog, Mr. Duncan? You are, you are a bit of a dumb animal sometimes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lock your vehicle and leave, don't leave valuables on display. <laughs> well, the car's at the hotel, so we're safe there. I said we're okay there. In, don't in, drop litter. Unless of course, unless of course at the hotel there is a special conference for people that break into cars, in which case we might have a problem. Don't drop litter, have fires or barbecues. Don't drop litter. Don't drop litter. Let's see what happens if we do. So there we go. I've had this peanut bar. So, mm, oh, that was delicious. Mm. What a lovely, beautiful spot this is. Mm. Oh. So Steve has just dropped some litter. He is breaking the countryside code. You should never drop litter in the countryside. Nothing's happened. I haven't been arrested. Huh. I think we've got away with it. Oh, okay then. 
I'll, I'll pick it up. I won't be naughty, Mr. Duncan, because we're setting a bad example yes. to your viewers. Yes. So uh, I'll put it back in the bag. Don't forget, we are influencers. We influence the world. We must recycle. Don't swim or paddle in the lake. Well, there's no chance of that because Mr. Duncan doesn't like water. I can't swim. And it's too cold anyway. We don't like water. <laughs> camping is not permitted. Camping. So no, no camping. Ooh. Ooh. No camping, Mr. Duncan. Ooh. So you're not allowed to, uh, to mince around out here in the wilderness. Oh, uh, no camping. Oh, OK, I'm going oh, in. Hang on. It means no. It's, it's, it's camping under canvas. It doesn't mean that kind of camping. It's the other type of camping where you overnight in the stars. Yeah, OK. Uh, the lake is a drinking water reservoir. I don't know what, well we know that, I don't know why it's told us that. By being water efficient, you can ensure water supplies are secure. There's a picture of a man with a dog. Does that dog look like it's being kept under control? It doesn't. It hasn't got a lead on. It could just run off at any moment and uh, attack anyone. So they're breaking their own rules by showing a picture of a dog that hasn't even got a lead on. So there we go. Are you, uh, what have you got there, Mr. Duncan? I found a sign. It says, danger, overhead power lines. Well, yeah, I can't see any overhead power lines, Mr. Duncan. No, I think this has come from somewhere else. Maybe we'll find the power. Well, if we find them, we'll show you. There we go, that's, that's about all I've got to say, really. Unless it, people want to know any facts about Lake Vernwy. Well, later on, we will be talking all about Lake Vernwy. And don't forget, I also made a video here, an actual lesson filmed here in Lake Vernwy. Did but I now, was there as well. But now we are going to carry on with our walk. Shall we, shall we carry on? Let's carry on. We'll continue with our walk. Get your bag. Right, let's go. Off we go. See I'll you later. i put this in my pocket. Okay then. Oh. Right, let's go, Mr. Duncan. Right, yeah. off we go. Bye. Bye. Can you see where we are standing now? We are on the big dam. Yes, the big dam. And there are two uses and two spellings of the word dam, aren't there, Mr. Duncan? That is true. First, the thing we are standing on right now is called a dam. Dam, something used for containing water, normally made from stone. And there you can see this dam is holding all this water in. This is the reservoir. The dam contains the water. And there is another use and spelling of the word dam. And it's a form of exclamation. A swear word, an expletive. Normally used when you get very, very angry about something. Yes. Damn, I missed my bus. Damn, I'm late for work. Damn you, Mr. Duncan. I'm hungry and I want to go to the hotel and have something to eat and you've kept me out here filming for far too long. Oh, OK then. Do you want to go back to the hotel? I'm only joking. I think I, Steve wants I would to... never swear at Mr. Duncan. I'm hungry as well, though, to yes, be honest. Good. So shall we go back to the hotel now? Yes. We're going back right now.
do 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 oh i hope you enjoyed that so that was part of our adventure that we had last week in wales there is another part still to come not today we will show that next sunday next sunday we will be on the beach so that will be happening next sunday but here he is it's mr steve everyone <laughs> oh. mr steve is here i think mr steve deserves a round of applause i haven't done anything yet <laughs> well it is my birthday after all you don't, you don't have to shout <laughs> Oh, oh no! It's your birthday, isn't it? Not okay. my birthday. It's my birthday every you, day. You don't have to shout, Steve. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mr. Duncan! You don't have to shout. I am not shouting. You, you kind this of, is how I normally speak, you, as you well know. You kind of are shouting. You need to adjust the microphone to take an account of my excitement you see, when I come on live in you, front of millions of people. <laughs> you see, the problem is that what I do is I, I set the equipment up for my voice. Oh. And I control my Aww. voice, but unfortunately, Steve doesn't control his voice. It's <laughs> like, it's like an explosion, Mr. Steve's voice. It sort of just blasts out. It'll be fine. The neighbours in our hotel, the people that were in the other rooms, were complaining because Steve kept practicing his singing, and they were complaining. So they all went down to the, the reception in the hotel, and they said, "Look, there is this guy upstairs, and he keeps singing." And they all insisted that their hotel bill was halved. So so they only paid half of the hotel bill because of Steve's singing. It's nothing to do with that. It's because you were roaming through the corridors of the hotel late at night. Yes, I was naked. Yes, exactly. Yes, Disturbing I, and causing distress. I probably shouldn't have done that. It's my birthday today. It is your birthday. <laughs> yes, you don't wear it out. OK, so we, look, look what I've got in my hand. <laughs> oh, birthday boy. <laughs> He's no boy anymore, I can tell you. No, right. Unfortunately. <laughs> well, somebody said you only look 35. I know. I'm look, I've got the register. And uh, it, uh, what I've discovered is it's too much hard work to tick <laughs> everybody up. I literally haven't got time because I only have half an hour before I come on. Uh, to see what's going on. So in that half an hour, I have ticked off quite a lot of people from the list. Uh, Agnieszka is in Wales. Oh, well, that's where we've just been. Exactly. So hopefully <laughs> she might recognise that video of Lake Vernery. Lake, but, uh, Lake Vernery is a beautiful place. We've been before lots of times. Mm. Palmyra said, how do people understand us? Or how do we understand them in Wales? Ah, yes, uh, because in Wales they speak Welsh. They speak Welsh, but of course they have to speak uh, English. Um, and everybody in Wales speaks English. They don't have to. So, uh, <laughs> well, they, they speak Welsh when the English people aren't around. Yes. Uh, and the, but when we're around, they will speak... They have to, they have to learn in English. It's part of the curriculum. So when, when we are not there, they speak Welsh when we are in the room they speak english i think most welsh people speak english most of the time it's only in certain parts of wales yes that they still insist that they will only speak welsh on a serious so point I, I think the welsh language is being used less and less so so fewer people use welsh or speak welsh than maybe 20 or 30 or maybe 50 50 or even 100 years ago so probably it's it's it isn't what you you would call an expanding language i think fewer people are now speaking welsh but uh there is a core with the welsh are very proud patriotic people and uh, the Welsh language w w will never die out. That's one thing I always notice when we go to Wales. I to say things. But that's one thing I notice when we go to Wales. You always see lots of flags, Welsh flags, and also the red dragon as well. The red dragon. Oh! So the red dragon is the symbol of Wales. And there. So this is something we got from the hotel as a, as a gift for <laughs> staying there. It's a little... Welsh dragon. Do you like that? Isn't he cute or she? <laughs> I think. Uh, we don't know. Uh, hang on a minute. It's a boy. It's a boy. Right. <laughs> 
I don't know how you got that, Steve, because there's, there's nothing there. It's the tail. It's oh. the tail. Oh, I see. Anyway, did you give the clap to the person who was first on the live chat today? <laughs> I, I was watching. I haven't given the clap to anyone. <laughs> Not for a few years, anyway. Not so. No, no, I haven't. Uh, ah. I did for the for the first person on the live chat. I always give a little round of applause. Oh, well, that was uh, uh, Alam Gear Hussain today. Alam Gear, well From done. Bangladesh. Look, I'm collecting all this information. Your names, where you're from. I've, I've got it all here. It's all written down. There's been some interesting comments from people. I'm doing this in alphabetical order, by the way. So, OK, then. Uh, don't shout at me if I haven't got you in the right order. Uh, Anna Rita says that you're a lovely teacher and happy birthday. Uh, Anna, who's got a home in Rome and also one in Tuscany. Um, Where are you today, Anna, is what we want to know. Anna, can we come <laughs> and visit you in Tuscany? It sounds nice. Uh, uh, Gretel says, I've got to be kind to you. Mr. Duncan, because it's difficult to lose weight. It is. I'm only, but we're sort of joking, aren't yes. we? Actually, uh, I, th I think after our holiday, because we did a lot of walking, we did some walking in Wales and then we went to the Welsh coast, to the beach, and we did quite a lot of walking there as well. So we have done a lot of exercise. And I think, I think I may have lost a little bit of weight. That's good news. Jeff. Uh, sent you more cakes than anyone else. Oh, I think it looked about like twenty cakes. Yes, I noticed that Jeff. <laughs> Jeff sent, sent you lots of cakes. Jeff sent twenty cakes from Florida. Mm. <laughs> uh, and, and Connell uh, from Azerbaijan mm. uh, has got a connection with a birthday. Someone in her family has got. A birthday today, her brother's son. Yes, her nephew is six. Is six today. But what? what's your nephew's name? So maybe we could send a special happy birthday. Yes. Happy birthday to Connell's nephew. So what? what's his name? Or maybe it's a secret. Luis Mendez says you only look 35. Uh, so that's a special gold star. <laughs> thank you. Mendes. Thank you very much. I wish I was 35 again. Uh, 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 Sabasan from Algeria wants to speak with a British accent. Oh, so you just have to practice. Imagine you're trying to uh, impersonate somebody. Yes. Keep watching us and record uh, practice and then record yourself. Mm. That's what I do if I'm trying to get an accent. If I'm in a play and I have to get an accent, I record myself and then you can pick up where it's not quite right and then you can repeat the bits where you've got it wrong. So that's a little tip. Hmm. Record yourself. That's a good uh, uh, suggestion. Sergio, or uh, his, uh, or they call themselves Sergio. I read this. I've been looking at the live chat from last week. Uh, Sergey is his real name, but he calls himself Sergio because it's a sort of a European ization of the word yes. of the name Sergei, from Russia. Sergey sounds Russian. So did we swim in the lake? We didn't because it said on that piece of paper that it was drinking water and we were not to swim. You're not allowed to swim in the lake. No, they won't let you. Besides that, I can't swim. Having said that, there is something special coming up next Sunday because we is went it? to the beach. And Mr. Steve did something quite amazing. Well, so, now don't say anything. We want to keep this a secret. Wasn't it amazing? Oh, well, I thought it was amazing. I, w I was stunned. But then Mr. Steve does like to surprise me. For example, today he gave me the most amazing birthday present. And this is something that I, I was really, really, I was almost in tears. He screamed. I was screaming a lot. He screamed. And if the neighbours heard, he would have thought I was we, I was committing murder. Yes, I, I always scream. <laughs> he always screams. Every year you manage to make me scream on my birthday, normally with excitement. So... Mr Duncan gets very excited. Mr Steve. Gets very excited. Look what Mr Steve brought for me. He <laughs> bought me this amazing watch. And, and this this is, believe it or not... It's a Russian watch, a Russian company. Is that right? Well, I think it's Russian. If it's not Russian, it's very close to Russia. I think it. Um, I think it's Russian. 
So anyone from Russia watching, what's the make of the watch, Mr. Duncan? The make is Vostok. Vostok. So if it was well, Sergio might be able to tell us mm, maybe because uh, I think Sergio is from from Russia. But thank you, Steve, for this wonderful watch and I will treasure it. It could be. I think it's Lithuania. It's very heavy. Lithuania, I think, but it's that's very close to Russia. It's very heavy. Tomek <laughs> is raising a glass to you. Cheers. He thinks it's too early, but it, believe me, it's not too no. early today. And uh, oh yes, we had an interesting. We had uh, got quite a few new names on this week that I haven't got on my list. There's over two hundred people who make comments on the live chat, Mr. Duncan. That's incredible. Uh, Abdullah Hussein says, "Is this a fake live stream?" So it isn't, and I hope you're still watching. Yeah, you can see, as I mentioned earlier, this is live. You can see the watch or the clock, should I say. So there is my watch and there is the clock. It says the same time, five minutes to three o'clock on a Sunday. It's the 12th of August and it's my birthday. Lots Ooh. of people have been saying happy birthday to you who don't necessarily make comments on the live chat because we have a lot of people watching mm. who are watching but don't necessarily take part in the live chat which is fine mm. but this was an interesting name Queen Ramadia or Queen Ramadi Queen Ramadi we've got a queen watching us today yes I, and uh, on both is, on both sides of the camera so beg your pardon Mr Duncan uh, so we'd like to know if you are a real queen or whether that is just what you call yourself because uh, obviously royalty watching us today. And if you are a re real queen, <laughs> what are you the queen of? Oh, yes. What? Mr. Vodka or Mrs. Vodka. Uh, it's not on the screen. Oh, right. I'm doing the same thing as I usually do. Now it is. Now it's on the screen, Mr. Steve. But yes. Well, uh, Sujin, Mr. Duncan saw this. We saw this watch on television. <laughs> about a year ago on our favorite tv show on our favorite tv show and uh, mr duncan loved the color of this watch because mr duncan of course likes to have something special it wouldn't be an ordinary watch no so i remember the make of this watch and the color and uh, i bought it for mr duncan for his birthday and uh, i've now got to work till i'm 90 to pay for it it, was it that expensive? It was very expensive. I had to take out extra money on the mortgage of the house <laughs> to pay for it, Mr. Duncan. So I hope you appreciate it. <laughs> Sujin likes the colour of the watch. It is orange. Something something very bright and you might say eye-catching. If something is eye-catching, eye-catching, it means it can be seen very easily. Something that stands out. Ooh. Sergio says Vostok means east. Oh, OK. Is it mechanical? Yes, it is. It is a mechanical watch. It's a mechanical watch. It's but we think it's Lithuania. Yes, that's what we think. So we're not entirely sure, but but the, the, it does seem to have a lot of Russian connections. Yes, so that they often they often talk about the connections that this particular brand of watch has. It sounds as if we're selling these, but we're not, honestly. But thank <laughs> you, Steve, once again for, for for what I can only describe as the most amazing gift. I don't think I've ever had such a wonderful gift in my life, although Having said that, you do like to surprise me. I do. Mr. Mr. Steve has surprised me a lot. Shall uh, I show your viewers what I surprised you with a few years ago? Is it big? Yes. Yes. Mr. Steve is going to show <laughs> everyone, including me, what, what he bought for me about about three years ago. Connell's nephew is Cameron. Cameron. Hello to Cameron. Let me just put that on the screen. To make it official, Cameron. Hello to Cameron and happy sixth birthday. Six years old. <gasps> I wish I was six again. Oh dear, I would I would have never started drinking at that age. It was terrible. It ruined my whole life. Catherine, Catherine, you're welcome. And that's a message from Anna. I do like it when people talk to each other 
on the live chat that's very nice thank you Ahmed mr. Steve is very generous he's he's given me such a lovely gift but over the years Steve has given me some very surprising gifts and and I think you're going to show two of them now so here we go here are two of the gifts that Steve has given me over the years there we go <laughs> one was this plastic sheep so the sheep that that's Lady Wollington that's a garden a garden ornament it's designed to go in the garden it's made of plastic it's not real uh, but we keep it in the house and, and Steve <laughs> Just... Steve also gave me this this wonderful snake as well it's huge so the snake goes around the uh, the sheep and they both look out of the living room window and uh, when uh, uh, people come to the window they are very surprised when they see this sheep and uh, the snake <laughs> I'm going to put it down because it's actually quite heavy. It's very heavy. Don't Ooh. drop it. Don't drop it. So there there's there are two of the gifts that Mr. Steve has given me over the years. So he always likes to buy something for me that's very unusual and quirky, quirky. Talking of unusual things, here are some I'm back. Here are some words, Steve, that exist in English that seem very unusual so I thought we would have another look at some very unusual words why not here is one flit 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 so when you hear this word Steve what do you think somebody who is moving about a lot doesn't stay in one place for very long flits about flits about they don't keep still they're constantly moving maybe not just physically but maybe they're moving from what if they're talking they might be going from one subject to another subject constantly mm. Mo you, I, we could be talking about cars one minute and then suddenly you change the subject and talk about something completely different then you go on to something else and it confuses people so if you if somebody flits about they're constantly changing and moving mm. about and it's slightly annoying so to flit is to change from one thing to another or move around frequently you flit okay yes I like that word it's a very unusual word but it's one of my favorite words that mm. are, are strange strange I like strange words here's another one sometimes I think mr. Steve is a little like this here we go so there show us show us the meaning of the word there it is look can you see mr. Steve's expression can you see the expression on his face he looks very aloof aloof a person who gives an expression that makes them look as if they are superior or better than those around them they look very aloof me aloof hmm I don't know what you mean mr. Duncan I don't know what you mean either probably a little unemotional as well mm. I would say distant distant aloof yes very aloof very apart dis from the apart from others mm. they don't want to get involved they want to get involved I don't want to get involved it's beneath with... me mm. to get mm. involved I'm going to be so aloof Mm, mm. but that's not us mm. we like to get involved particularly with your lovely viewers oh, so yeah. we are not aloof because if we we were aloof we wouldn't be doing this live stream it would be very difficult to do a live stream broadcasting live to the world if you are aloof because it I don't yes. think I don't think it would be very interesting to be honest could you say you were snooty Yes, Somebody I suppose who's aloof could be a bit snooty. Yes, right? they are. Mm. They are aloof. They are standoffish. 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 That's a great word as well. So there you go. Here's another one. This is quite an interesting word. Again, another short word. Jinx. 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 Ah, that means to to make something unlucky. Hmm. Uh, if something is jinxed then you then you can say it's unlucky so a, you? a certain action that is seen as being unlucky something that might occur 
that you believe causes something bad to happen jinx so a person will jinx something so it can be used as a yes. verb as well so you jinx something you make something go wrong by doing a particular thing so some people do believe that there are jinx moments where something happens and then it makes the other thing go wrong or become disastrous like some people think if they like me for example whenever whenever i go near any anything electronic <laughs> yes uh it seems to go wrong like phones mobile phones yes. or or laptops yes uh, and people and people sometimes say well you you've put a jinx on that because yes. every time you go near it it goes wrong so you can jinx something as a verb or a jinx is the unlucky thing or the unlucky action so it can also be a noun as well so there that's a very interesting word an evil curse as lolly says well done yes oh, evil yes. curse so something that makes another thing go wrong many of steve's work colleagues think that mr steve is a jinx because of the the problems he always has with his computer and his laptop and his mobile phone <laughs> he always has problems with them and one more and then we will carry on with what miss because you want to show something to i've us. got some words as well mr. but if we've got time have we got time with your birthday celebrations we always have time would you like to see some of mr steve's driving now here is something that Ooh. often causes a little bit of distress so here we go here is a little bit of mr steve's car driving and I haven't made this fast. I haven't sped this up. It is the speed at which I recorded it. So here we go. We're now going on the road with Mr. Steve in his car. Have there I is... seen this? You haven't seen this. So we're driving along now. Now, what is the first thing you notice? Not you, Mr. A Steve. A sign saying that there's a sharp bend to the right. Not you. No overtaking. Not you. Oh. No. <laughs> I'm on about the, the people watching, our viewers. So the first thing you will notice is that we drive on the wrong side of the road. So can you see there that the cars are coming the wrong way? And we drive on the right side of the road. So we drive on the left side of the road. Which is right. Sorry? <laughs> Don't start that again. Are we, are we really doing that again? We drive on the left side in the uk steve i don't know where you've got the right from but it's right to us i mean it's correct it's right I mean. oh i see oh right. yeah sharp bend sharp bend to the you were going to test me on road signs yes the other week well you can test me now that's gone a long time ago oh that's a nice house it's it's a nice house that's yes. a nice little cottage that's on the way to shrewsbury yes i think this is this is actually quite local to where we live we will see something else in a minute. There's some road signs. There's a road sign, yes. Junction coming up to the left. Yes. And then it's a, a bit of a zigzag. There we go. There's a junction to the left. It's no overtaking. Slow Shh, down. Wait there, wait there. Calm down, Steve. Calm down. <laughs> he always gets so excited. That's warning us of a bend. So there is a bend. An S bend. There is a bend. Ahead. Okay. There is a bend coming up in the there road. There we go. Yes. Here comes the bend. There's some farmer's equipment. <laughs> really? And we're going. This is very interesting, Ooh. Mr. Duncan. We're going round the bend. How and did now, we get there? Did we I teleport? Oh dear! All right, just calm down. <laughs> I'm trying to. No one's going to learn anything if you keep rabbiting. So now we're going through what I would describe as a quaint village, a Welsh village. So this is actually now in Wales. I can't remember the name of the village. Now I want to say. I want to say Welshpool, but I don't think it is. It wasn't Welshpool. No, it's a small Welsh village, I think, this one. But you can see this is, I would say that this is a very typical Welsh village. And there you can see some lovely old houses made of wood. And as we leave the village, you will see that we will be back, suddenly back in the countryside again. So this is taken in Mr. Steve's car. So this is actual footage as we were driving to Wales the other day. And there you can see some of the beautiful views. There's a lovely house. That's another nice house, isn't it? You were well, interested in that. There, there, there were some, some really nice buildings. 
on the way it doesn't look as if you're driving very fast it looks like you're driving very slowly there well i think it was a 40 mile an hour limit oh i see I so think. so in this video you are driving at 40 miles an hour i'm sure there was a sign we would, we would have to rewind here comes the local bus so this is probably the only bus that Look. runs oh. oh this is the only bus that runs araf araf is welsh for slow yes did you see that on the road araf araf so that is actually a welsh word that means slow so you can see in wales they print on the the signs and also on the road they print english and welsh but the welsh is always written first so the welsh word comes first and then the english comes after you might see that sign again in a moment let's have a look if we go a bit further you might see araf again <laughs> i bet we don't now i've said that but look at that isn't that beautiful that's one of the things i love about wales such beautiful sights on the road i think we're going to change the scenery oh no we're not no actually we're going to end that's it did you enjoy driving with mr steve there and of course mr steve is such a safe driver he is he's so safe it was very distracting what very distracting distracting what having was? you filming while i was driving along oh i see i found it very distracting i hope you enjoyed that i think that might be the first time that we've ever shown the car being driven in that way on the live stream so i hope you enjoyed that a very narrow road <laughs> i had to be very careful because uh, welsh people have got this reputation of driving very fast along their country roads and then you suddenly they suddenly come round the corner from nowhere <laughs> and uh well we didn't want any accidents we're getting some very interesting messages on the live <laughs> chat most most of them saying oh my goodness that looks so dangerous because you're driving on the wrong side <laughs> not many countries drive on the left <laughs> uh i think we are one of the few countries that do i don't um where else drives on the left i think now i want to say malaysia do they i think malaysia also drive on the same side as the road yes in what fact about australia i'm not sure about australia but in malaysia they they do drive on the same side as the road of oh. the road and that's because of our influence you see because it used to be uh, a british colony that's right malaysia some more birthday greetings mirella says happy birthday thank you very much yes it is my birthday today tias says here we drive on the left side just like the uk so also in indonesia ah interesting indonesia well that's good to know <laughs> sergio says i can't watch it it looks crazy <laughs> it does look like it must look very strange to some people because it looks like we're driving on the wrong side of the road in the opposite direction <laughs> palmira says that she's always confused as well yes sergio they are narrow roads <laughs> you have to be very careful uh in w wales is like that all over yes uh because there is so much well wales isn't a particularly big country anyway no and there's lots and lots of farmland and the roads have to go round all the uh all the farmers fields um because the roads uh over many many years were formed and of course you have to if somebody owns one piece of land then somebody else owns another bit of land you've got to try and get a road to go around those uh, around those bits of land agneska says in wales it, there is a lot of cycling on the road i love cycling yes we did pass quite a few people riding bikes bicycles you are right thank you nicole as well oh flat eric so <laughs> someone actually spotted little flat eric oh nicole in the driver's seat uh, sorry in the passenger seat earlier really i didn't spot <laughs> flat eric not not in that the thing we just uh, watched it was the thing earlier the thing earlier on steve uh -huh. Miss flat eric was on the screen for a few moments in the car oh jeff has something for you steve oh did you see that no well, I'll, i will bring it back there it is we are all set to sing happy birthday oh <laughs> 
Well done, Jeff. Set. Well, we'd like to sing happy birthday, but of course, I'm not sure whether we can. We have to be careful singing happy birthday because the words are OK, but the tune is still owned under copyright, as far as I know. So we have to be very careful. We'll try. So happy birthday, happy birthday, happy ah. birthday. Happy birthday. Alan Gear Hussain says that they also drive on the left in Bangladesh. Oh, OK. Well done. So, <laughs> a, so actually, it would appear that there are many countries that drive on the same side of the road as we do. Mika wants to drive on that road. I'll tell you, Mika, if you've got a sports car and then you and you go to Wales, it's got some of the best roads for driving on. If you like driving along country roads in a nice open top sports car then that's the place to go either there or in scotland mm. uh nicole yes i did put you on the register nicole yes nicole asks mr steve i think you didn't put me on the register well the reason was nicole ah. is because i don't think you probably didn't come on within the first 20 minutes You've but made, you've made. There we go. You've made Nicole just cry. Just to prove, just she's, to prove. She's crying. Now when, look, now when, look what you've done, Steve. <laughs> when Nicole comes back on, and in Malta, of course. There you go, Nicole. I've just ticked you off. Somewhere. <laughs> I've ticked you off. Uh, but I, I only did it for the first twenty minutes because then I had to get ready. Uh, so. You might have been, or perhaps I missed you. Apologies, but you're on there now. So, one gold star to Nicole. Do you like my little sheep? <laughs> of course, you can't drive around Wales without seeing these. Exactly. They're Every, everywhere. Everywhere in the fields. Sheep. This Ev is what Wales is famous for. Lots of sheep. Because it's very hilly in Wales. Very hilly. There. Lots of hills. Lots of water. It's a very, they have a very high rainfall in Wales. Uh, and because you've got lots of hills and mountains, it rains a lot. Uh, and that's ideal for, for grass growing. Uh, and uh, the sheep eat the grass. So lots of sheep in Wales. Uh, that's not even remotely annoying, Mr Duncan. Uh, if it wasn't your birthday... I would be very annoyed and I would take that off you and throw it across the other side of the room. Like you did last week. On Wednesday, Steve got very angry with this sheep and he threw it away. And lots of people complained about Mr. Steve's rough treatment of this sheep. He's still smiling. You want to see the other things he does to it? I comb its fur. <laughs> Coat. It's a coat on on a sheep. You, you, they call it a coat, don't or, they? Or fleece. Fleece. Yes. Fleece. The fleece. Ah, there's an interesting word. Fleece. Fleece. Shall I write that down? Because that's a, that's actually an interesting word. So the coat on a sheep is called fleece, but you wouldn't call it fur. Well, it's wool. Yes, but but the actual the actual thing itself is called fleece. Fleece. It's a fleece. So here we go. So there's the word. That's an interesting word, actually. Fleece. Yes. But there is also another use of the word. So the coat of the sheep is called fleece. But this can also be used as a verb as well. It can indeed. And how? How would we use this as a verb? If I was to fleece you, if I was if you fleece somebody, it means you rip them off. Yes. It which... means that uh, not exactly stealing, no, but you, if, if, for example, you trick them into paying more, you trick them into you tr paying more for something. So yes, you, you exactly. Tr you trick them into paying more for something than they should. So if I was to try and sell you a car. Yes. Say my eight year old car at the moment with 180,000 miles, 200,000 kilometres on it. OK. You might say, what's a lovely car, Mr Steve. Yeah. Uh, how much do you want for it? And hmm. I could say to you, £10,000, Mr Duncan. Now, you might not know anything about cars. It's only probably worth about £3,000, if that. I don't know anything about cars, but I know that £10,000 for a, an eight-year-old car, you are trying to... 
fleece me. I'm trying to rip you off, Mr. Duncan. You are tricking me into paying too much. You are trying to fleece me. Sometimes you go to the market, particularly if you're on holiday and you see something and you pay something for it. And then you later find out it's worth a lot less. You can say, huh, I was fleeced. Yes. It means that you were charged a lot more than you should have been for the item. Back to the live chat because it's very busy on the live chat. It's very the, busy today. The live chat is very busy. Malta, of course, Malta does drive on the. Uh... Oh, Vodka Man says my eyes are like Chinese today. Yours. Don't understand what uh, what well, you mean by that. Well, did, didn't we used to think that? That didn't we used to think that your dad looked a bit Chinese? Well, yes, my my um, my uh, grandfather. Uh, everybody thought he was Chinese. Oh, ah, that's interesting. He wasn't, but everybody thought he was. So perhaps uh, I've inherited that look around the eyes. Yes. Yeah, so maybe maybe there is a little bit of Chinese in Mr. Steve. Maybe. <laughs> There's no answer to that, really, is there? So lots of people on the live chat. Oh, Tomek says, "Come onto the chat and read out my funny comments." Well, <laughs> I am now. I, I'm on there, Tomek. But I'm just waiting for your funny comment. So as soon as you give me your funny comment, I will read it out. We've probably missed it because there are so many comments today. It is rather busy today because it's uh, it's my birthday. Sharath what? says hello to me. Hello, Sharath. Hello. Well, thank you very much. Where, where is Sharath? Uh, just second from the bottom. Oh, yes. There. Hello, Sharath. Is it your first time here? If it is your first time, I will offer you some lovely applause. Yes. Well, we better give some applause, applause <laughs> <laughs> to Trantai Khan oh. as well, who says that we haven't read their comments yet. I'm oh. sorry, but we've we probably you probably put the comments on while we were watching a video. I don't know, so apologies for that. We we uh, do find it difficult to keep up with all. The comments that are on the live chat, especially so, uh, today, because it's my birthday and everyone wants to wish me happy birthday. But we've read the comment that you said <laughs> we haven't read your comment yet. OK, so I hope that counts. So we read the comment that you, you said we didn't read the comment. So so we have actually read your comment, even though it's not the comment that you said that we didn't read. Wow. I don't I don't understand anything. I, from Bulgaria. I don't understand anything I just said there. Nikolai, are you on my list? Ying Hung. Yes. Ying Hung says, how oh, green. Man. Ying Hung. Can I just say this bit? Ying Hung says, how green is that country road? An old Hollywood film of Chinese wartime story. The Inn of Sixth Happiness. I've seen that movie. Yes. I've actually seen that movie. It's very creepy. Ah, is that the one with... Um, it's like a ghost story. Now, what's the name of that famous uh, actress? I Even don't know. Six... Oh, oh, famous actress. I think she's... Uh, what? Yes, famous actress what? Uh, in that film. I can't think of her name. Maybe somebody can tell us. This is a Chinese film, though. Is it? Yes. I, I just said oh, an right. old okay. Hollywood film of, of the Chinese wartime story. Oh, oh yes, it might be. The Inn of the Sixth Happiness. Oh, yes, I think you might be right, Steve. But it is a well-known film. It's a very well-known film. Oh, what was the name of that actress? She was from uh, Austria, I Miss, think. Mr. Steve's birthday is coming up before long. No, your, Steve's birthday is in February. So your, your yeah. birthday is, is near the, the start of the year. Can someone tell us the name of the famous actress in the Inn of the Sixth Happiness? Yes. Uh, I think she was from Austria. Yes. Is it? Is it, it's not Sophia Loren, is it? No, she was Italian. Okay then. Uh, yes. Oh, I like that. She was a famous sort of actress in the forties and fifties. Was Was she in Murder on the Orient Express? She was. Is that her? I, she was in that. If it's the right film I'm thinking of. Yes. Well, I can go and find the film and then get the name. Go on then. So so there's there's the live chat, Steve. Carry on. Swedish Ingrid Bergman. Oh, that's... Sue Cat's got it. <laughs> Thank you, Sue Cat. That's who I was thinking of, Swedish. Thank you, Sue Cat. You've saved me having to 
to walk into the other room thank, <laughs> thank you very much you've just saved my legs and who else was in that film as well who there was a few fame it was probably one of those what they call them uh, those was, noir films dark it, films i want to say john wayne no it wasn't john wayne <laughs> I it, was, it wasn't a, it, it, it it wasn't a wild west film i'm just shot to, in I, I don't know what <laughs> But actually, Sorry. actually, do you know that, that John Wayne starred in many movies that had nothing to do with cowboys? It's very strange. Oh, he did. Whenever you see John Wayne in a movie where he isn't on a horse, it always seems very strange. It's very, very strange. I'm trying to think. Oh, look, Tran Tai Khan is 12 years old. OK, let's have a look. And... Uh, I understand Vietnamese. So, so Tran Thai Khan is actually in Vietnam. We have a lot of viewers in Vietnam. Are you our youngest viewer? Well, we might we might have um, Nicole. Is it Nicole's nephew, who's only six? Ah, but is he watching? Ah, yes. Well, I think he might be. So he's only six. So, <laughs> right, Tran, you are 12. That's fantastic. Fanta it's fantastic. Fantastic being 12. Never grow up. Some some people say that I still act like a 12-year-old. I don't know where they get that from. Are you the youngest? But who is the oldest, I wonder? Mr Duncan? <laughs> Mr Duncan's going back for his sheep. Bleh. That's not even slightly embarrassing. Uh, I've got some words here, mm -hmm. which I was going to use last week, but we ran out of time. This is a request, by the way, a request. I think it was Tias, Tias or Tijen. It was one of you <laughs> asked, could you talk about phrases connected with the eyes? So that's what we are going to do right now. Mr. Steve is going to do it right now. I'm going to do a few. OK. And then when you think people are getting bored, tell me to stop. And stop. Then we'll have a... Stop, Steve. Stop. Everyone's bored. <laughs> Already. OK. I'm going to bite my tongue because it's your birthday. So when you bite your tongue, it means you are stopping yourself from saying something that you might otherwise regret my or might cause offence to people. My fat tummy is disappearing already. Well, we did do a lot of exercise. The amount of walking that we did in Wales was unbelievable. Anyway, words or phrases connected with eyes. That's a very expensive watch, Mr Duncan. You better look after it. This is my new watch. Mr Steve bought this for my birthday today. It's a watch from Lithuania. Now, Lithuania, is that actually part of Russia or is it a separate country? That's what we'd like to know. OK. We don't know everything. We don't <laughs> pretend that we know everything. We don't know everything. Ingrid Bergman was born in Stockholm. But who else was in that film? Who was that famous big burly actor who who was always used to sort of... He was a bit of a, a bad character in films. A bad character. Uh, in those sort of 1950s films. Peter Lorre? No. <laughs> uh, Hello. My he was name. really, he, was, he looked like a brick. I'm doing my Peter Laurie impression. Hello. My name is Peter Laurie. Nobody knows. Well, Sue Cat might know who people Peter know, Laurie is. People know Peter Laurie. Who's that famous? He was, he was always killing people. He was, uh, he was always a bad character. OK. Uh, Ingrid Bergman, 1950s films. OK. You're normally um, very good at this. Rock Hudson? No. OK. Late, Rock Hudson was a bit later, I think. Um, uh, he was a baddie. Richard Widmark. No, no. <laughs> I'm just saying anything Sue now. Sue Cattle tell us. Who else was in In of the Sixth Happiness? There was a, there was a long shot, wasn't there, uh, of Ingrid Bergman in, in that... Uh, she was like in a shed or something like yes, that. Yes. It's the, it the, very dark. The cinematography is actually outstanding. The Inn of the Sixth Happiness is the name of the movie. And it has some of the most stunning photography ever. Uh, what do they call them? Uh, uh, something noir films, don't they? Yes, film noir. Film noir, a sort of a dark black and white film from yes. the 1950s. And everything is shot either very close up so you get the the very rough edges of the actor and actress 
or it's quite often they are very artistic shots yes. Sue cat film noir okay right oh not too well Tias we are looking for the actor that was in the Sue cat we're looking for the name of the actor who played alongside Ingrid Bergman in the film in of the sixth happiness it wasn't Kirk Douglas no 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 it's you, you'd know it straight away Kirk. he was in all these 1950s black and white films and he was always a bit of a baddie a womanizer <laughs> really big bloke yes uh, we could you could never understand now how women would find him attractive but he always was uh, Hollywood men in the 1950s 40s 50s and 60s were, were huge yes uh, and they were always found to be they were always older a lot older than the women and uh, they were always seen as very attractive okay but the, they always looked out of shape uh, <laughs> Robert Donat no Robert no. Robert Donat or do, yeah Robert oh, Mr Duncan you, you go and look it up Robert Donut you go and look it up <laughs> I could look Famous it up on, film I could look it up on my phone you could do I've got a phone here you cheat why don't oh, I just your look birthday it, <laughs> why, no, not saying anything bad to Mr why Duncan do, today why don't I just it's look his it up birthday I look it up on my phone so in of the sixth happiness you look it up and I'll uh... okay then ah words to do to do with eyes Right. Well, you better stay here because I might want your help. Keep an eye out for. <laughs> Will you stop pushing me onto the camera? Keep an eye out for. If you keep an eye out for something, it means you're you're just literally keeping an eye out. So you're watching for something all the time. If somebody says to you, uh, oh, uh, Will you you're having a party or something like that and you're looking for somebody to arrive somebody might say to you or oh, will you keep an eye out for for Jeff will you keep an eye out for Amanda when they arrive uh, tell them to come over and say hello to me it just means you're doing something else but at the same time watching for something else to happen you're keeping an eye out for something uh, I'm sure Mr Duncan would ha have uh, other examples on how to use that word here's another one see eye to eye if you see eye to eye with somebody it means you agree with them you see eye to eye with somebody on a particular subject so if for example you've got the same political views as somebody it means that you might say to them ah we see eye to eye on that it means you agree with them on the, on a particular subject uh, all eyes are on so you might say all eyes are on if for example somebody is going to make an important speech for example uh, you might they might might be a big introduction for them before they go onto the stage and you might say all eyes are on this particular person who's going to make this speech all eyes are on Mr Duncan because it's his birthday and he's going to do a live stream and I can sense that Mr Duncan is right behind me okay we've, we've got some information move over move over we've got some information now about um, oh <laughs> I had the information but ah. now now Google has moved to the next thing so wait there a second oh, Vitas has said we've got the answer to Lithuania used to be part of Russia but gained its independence in 1990 let's put that on the screen so that's interesting so Lithuania regained its independence from Russia in 1990 that does sound like something that's happened in recent times so yes 1990 yes so now we all know a sight for sore eyes says uh, Chris and I think I've got that but it one here I have the cast of in of the sixth happiness okay then there, there it is so there is the cast so all of the people that were in the movie so Ingrid Bergman Kurd Jurgens oh well that's somebody said that Robert Donat oh Bert Kwok Bert Kwok 
Who remembers Bert Kwok from the Pink Panther films? He would always attack Peter Sellers. <laughs> that wasn't who I was thinking of. So obviously the person I thought was in the film isn't. Isn't, no. Uh, Noel Hood. So uh, we'll look up 1940s uh, actors. Well, he wasn't in the film, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, right. Somebody said a sight for sore eyes. Ah, oh, yes. There it is. Chris says there's an example of the use of the word eyes in a phrase. Uh, a sight for sore eyes, which is a welcome sight. Mm. Something that you you like to see. So, for example, I could say Mr. Duncan just left the room. He's come back. I could oh, I could say, oh, there's a sight for sore eyes. It's me. Duncan. It's me. It's something pleasant that comes along, a welcome sight, and you usually use it uh, regarding talking about a person. Don't Normally you? in a positive way, but I've always thought in the past that it was used also in a negative way, because in one of my English lessons, I actually said that it's a negative phrase, but in fact, it's a positive one. So it, I always thought that if you said that someone was a sight for sore eyes, that they looked terrible. Apparently, no, that's not what it yes. means. You've yes. got to, yes. It's very strange how sometimes you can get that in your mind. And I think also sometimes people use these phrases in the wrong way. I think they do. They use it wrong or incorrectly Lee. and then it sticks in your mind. Yes. So if you say to somebody, you're <laughs> a sight for sore eyes, it means that you're probably not literally that your eyes are sore. Hmm. But that you've probably had a difficult day or you're yes. going through a bad period. It's, it's a relief. It's a relief. Somebody comes along and you're so pleased to see them. You say, oh, hello, you're a sight for sore eyes. Mr. Steve is wearing this lovely T-shirt and today he is a sight for sore eyes. Really? Yes. And I think it's a little bit too big for you. All right, let's do the let's do the bottom button up. There we go. That's good. That looks better. Here's another one. Eyes pop out of your head. <laughs> if your eyes pop out of your head, that means you are very surprised to see something. And literally, oh, you're so surprised that your eyes may literally pop out of their head. <laughs> so if you see something that is a massive surprise, you can use the phrase, oh, that made my... For example, you might see an elephant coming down the road. <laughs> and you might... <laughs> Obviously, if we saw an elephant coming down the road in England, we would be very surprised. Mm. So someone might say, I was so surprised, my eyes nearly popped out of their head. It's International Elephant Day today. Did you know that? How Is it? How strange that you mentioned elephants and it's actually International Elephant Day. So lots of people talking about and considering the... I'll come back the welfare of elephants around the world and of course in some countries elephants are hunted for their ivory well i don't know what steve did there well because i'm looking at you see i've got one eye i'm looking out for all the time mm -hmm. there we go i'm constantly oh <laughs> i'm constantly keeping an eye out for comments on the live chat okay as we're it, going along there it is and jeff has said what about the all-seeing eye ah the all-seeing all-seeing eye all-seeing which is uh something that uh, is used in turkey yes the all-seeing eye i might have it upside down it is a good luck charm it's a good luck charm which is covered in dead flies I'll it's, just get rid of them. It's, it's not good look for the flies. Uh, <laughs> the dead flies all over it, which they use in Turkey as a lucky charm, don't yes. they? So you put that on your step of your house, somewhere b near your house, so that the evil spirits will be uh, uh, will, will go away. Will kept come, away. Kept away. The evil eyes. Yes. Look, it, this isn't evil. It's looking out for evil. I That's think it. is the idea. So, we, we say uh, it's it's the all-seeing eye. It sees everything. I wonder if I can fit this in my mouth. 
It, you can't eat that. It's made of solid glass. It looks like a big sweet. But that's all over Turkey. I want to bite into it. And uh, have we got anyone from Turkey watching today? Is Mirak on today? Anyone from Turkey anyone today? Anyone from Turkey today might be able to tell us Calling more out. about the evil eye. But well done to Jeff. Calling Turkey. Well done to Jeff for noticing that. Uh, he must have been to, uh, to Turkey or must have heard it. Maybe other countries have the evil eye. There you go. I remember when we were in Turkey, I saw a really big one. It was huge, hanging up. It was it was so large. Yes. <laughs> uh, Luis Mendez. Oh, OK. But live chat. Uh, Luis Mendez says that he likes the film. The best film for dialogue is the Canons of Navarone. Is that the Guns of Navarone? Well, it could. But we call it the Guns of Navarone, but it might be it might be called something else in other countries, perhaps. Ah. The Guns of Navarone. Now, that was had a lot of famous Hollywood actors oh. and actresses in it. Here we go again. Uh, <laughs> the Guns of Navarone. So who was the... Can you remember the name of the uh, the famous actor in that? John Wayne? No. you. <laughs> John Wayne wasn't in The Guns of Navarone. I'm just going to say John Wayne for everything. A lot of... Uh, well, I just can't... Th I'm useless with names. Oh, anyway. was Clint Eastwood? He might have been in it. I think Clint Eastwood was in The Guns of Navarone and also Telly Savalis. That's not the one I'm thinking of and I still oh. can't think of the famous <laughs> actor. <laughs> maybe maybe I've got it wrong. <laughs> I'm sure Telly Savalis, who has a very similar hairstyle to Steve. Have you been very busy today, Mr Duncan? Me? Yes. Of course I have. It's my birthday. Could you... No, uh, if it's a, well, just generally, have you been busy preparing for the live stream? I have been very, very busy. Very busy. Very busy. Doing a lot of things. So could you say that you uh, have been up to your eyeballs? Yes. <laughs> up to your eyeballs. I've been up to both, both of those things. If you say you're up to your eyeballs, it I've means been, you're very busy. I've been up to my eyes and... It's a very common thing to say at work. Oh, I can't take on any more work. I'm up to my eyeballs. I'm up to my eyeballs. Or, Which of course, means... can't you just can't you say also I'm up to my eyes? Yes, I'm up to my eyes in work. I'm so busy. Please go away. It literally means you've got a pile of papers up uh, up here hmm. and you've got so... to deal with it all. You're extremely busy. You're up to your eyes or up to your eyeballs. I have work. so much work to do. It's it is up to my Eyeballs. Please don't bother me now. I'm up to my eyes in work. Mm. Up to my eyes. Or oh, eyeballs. Here's an interesting one. The monastic eye, says Jeff. I haven't heard of that one. Uh, an eye for an eye. An ah. eye for an eye. Yes. Oh, biblical. 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 But it's still used today. If you say an eye for an eye, it means that you're getting revenge. Oh, OK. Getting revenge on some. So if somebody does something bad to you, it means you do something of equivalence or equivalent badness hmm. back to them. So you do the same to them what they did to you. An eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. Yes. So if somebody, for example, steals something from you, steals a car from you, you will go and steal their car back <laughs> that's, from them. That sounds like China, because that's that, <laughs> apparently that's what they do in China. If someone steals your bike, you just go around the corner and steal someone else's. So it's not directly an eye for an eye, but it's very similar. So, hmm. so apparently in China, all of these bicycles go around and around because everyone is stealing each other's bikes. So eventually you will end up with your own bike back in your possession so if you keep stealing enough bikes eventually you will find your own bike and have it back <laughs> uh, yes so, uh, so a lot of people in a lot of countries and and even in this country still believe that if somebody does something to you you see so you, you're not supposed to according to the law say for example somebody murdered your wife <laughs> somebody yeah. murdered your wife then an eye for an eye if you were if you were going by that uh, by that logic or by that creed, you would go and murder their wife because in in some countries and certainly many many years ago, that you would be, would be perfectly uh, acceptable for you to go and do that. Of course, mm. now we've got laws that say you you mustn't do that, get revenge in that way. 
uh, but a lot of people do believe it. eye for an eye the context of it uh, you is take all, my eye i'll take your eye is also in a biblical sense isn't yes. it yes isn't it yes and uh yeah so that's where that phrase comes from so uh, you you hurt me i hurt you how about this one? Oh, where are we? Yes, just having a the, quick look. Gregory Peck. Gregory Peck. David Niven. Da Anthony Quinn. Da Peck Niven Quinn. It sounds like a firm of solicitors. Sue Cat, <laughs> will you please try and find that? I can't remember the name of that 1950s male lead actor. Charlton Heston. No, he but, was always he always he was always a bit of a baddie. But a bit of a womanizer as well. You saw someone with a gun. Yeah. Very, very big, built like a built like a brick. Bit like a built like a brick outhouse. Yes. I'm I've cleaned that up, by the way. Because uh, the other word is very rude. Look, you look it up. You look it up. Nineteen fifties, uh uh We've got some more comments. comments. You're not you're comments. not looking Yes, go on then. Look at the comments, Steve. Comments. Telesavalis smokes a cigar all the time. So, yes, I, I was right. Just go back a bit. Mr. Can Duncan? Mr. Steve copy smoking a cigar? Oh, OK. That's a know. that's a very interesting request, but I'm sure you can do it with that. What, what you mean? Tell us of Alice. Well, well, you can just sort of put a cigar in your mouth as if you're smoking a cigar. A bit of character acting. <laughs> I don't know where that's been. <laughs> you, you you don't know one you don't want to know where this has been if you had a lollipop i could pretend to be telly savalas why and say who loves you baby oh yes because <laughs> oh yes telly savalas used to be in a tv show where he played a policeman and he he he, he was always sucking i hope that comes out right on the subtitles he was always always sucking a lollipop <laughs> Connell makes a valid point. What? About eye for an eye. Two wrongs don't make a right. That's it. And that's why we have laws now to uh, prevent us from taking revenge. That's it. Uh, so what what we what we do now in civilized society is that we we find the person that committed the uh, the bad act. And we uh, put them on trial and then send them to prison and we punish them that way. That's we it. don't take matters into our own hands. That's it. And uh, and seek revenge. That's but right. But you might do it for minor things. Yes. Uh, but you wouldn't do it for, for sort of major crimes. Although so, I'm sure it still happens. So if somebody came up to me and kicked me right at the bum, I could probably go round to them and kick them up the bum. Yes. OK, so so not not necessarily an eye for an eye. Jeff was talking about the monastic eye. OK. Being similar to the all seeing evil eye. Oh, I see. But I think that's that. I'm not sure what that is, because there's also the uh, the sort of Illuminati. I think that's what he was referring to. Which is this sort of so-called secret band of people who are ruling the world. Well, there is on, on the I think it's uh, the dollar. Yes. The dollar bill. There's an eye on there. There is a pyramid, there? a pyramid, and on top there is an eye. And I think that is a reference to one of these secret societies, the Illuminati. I'm starting to sound like that, that nutcase off the internet. Yes, Sergio. <laughs> Old Testament law is eye for an eye. But we, we still use the expression. Here's another one. What about this one? Oh, OK. Have you got a roving eye? Oh, a roving a eye. Roving so eye. a roving eye can be sort of a roving eye. That means somebody who is always looking out at other people and fancying them. So you might be you might be in a relationship with somebody, uh, and uh, for example, you might be a girl in a relationship with this particular man, and people may say. I don't go out with him. He's got a roving eye, a roving eye, which means he's always looking out for other women. He's not satisfied with having one woman. He's always looking at other women, of course, eyeing them up for equality. Them. But don't, don't forget, though, for equality. Yes, because it's 2018 and everyone gets so angry about everything now. Also, it can refer to a woman as well. So a woman of course. can have a roving eye. She's looking for another man. 
So if somebody says that uh, don't go out with them, they've got a roving eye, it means that they're likely to be unfaithful to you Ooh. because they're always chatting up behind your back other people, a roving eye, somebody who... And you, we all know people like that. If you've been in a relationship with somebody and you can... Maybe you, you catch them looking at somebody mm. else like that. <laughs> roving eye. And then when you're not around, they might go and chat them up and sleep with them and cheat on you. Yes. Yes, they might. It's my, all... it's my birthday today, Steve. Do you, yes. want to, do you want to see some pictures from my birthday way back in 2005 when I was still in China? So here I am in China. No. Oh, yes. As it's your birthday, yes. Here yes. I am in China. So there. Look at that. So there I am in China. And that was many years ago. Was that on your birthday? That was on my birthday in 2005. Many years ago. Oh my goodness! I've just, I've just realised how long ago that is. <laughs> that's a long time ago. That's, that's eight years. No, no, sorry, not eight years. What am I about? It's even longer. Than, oh no! I'm just horrified. I've just realised when when that was taken. Two thousand and five. That picture. Oh my god! I feel so old. So it's actually thirteen years ago. You're wearing the shirt. Oh yes. Your that shirt, yes, viewers. This is the shirt that I wore the other night when Mr. we went. Mr. Duncan we went, still has that shirt. We went to dinner the other night, and I actually had that shirt on. So I'd love to make a comment <laughs> about what that shirt looks like on you now compared to what it did oh, I know. many years ago. Are but you, I won't because it's your birthday. Are you referring to my weight again? Let's just say the buttons. Oh. Now are being stretched to their limit. No, how oh, it's your birthday, Mr. Duncan. Ooh, okay. I'm going to be kind to you. Yes, Ooh, because you uh, I, Gretel has already uh, has already said to me that I've got to be kind to you today. I'm going deaf. Do you want to see what's coming next Sunday? Next Sunday, because we are going soon. Next Sunday. Are we? Ah. Well, we are going soon. Yes, we've got about nine minutes. Nine minutes before we leave. But don't go yet because there's one more surprise coming up. So don't leave yet. Oh, another surprise. There is another surprise coming. Mr. Oh, Duncan no. doesn't know anything about this. Oh, uh, what, what and, have you done? Uh, you what? could say that Mr. Duncan, when he sees this surprise, he could hardly believe his eyes. No, I couldn't believe my eyes this morning when exactly. Mr. S Mr. Steve gave me this very, very expensive watch. Actually, it wasn't that expensive. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> uh, yes, I, I got it off the internet. No, you you didn't really. steal it, did you? No, <laughs> not at all. There we go. I, so, Mr. Duncan, when he saw that, could hardly believe his eyes. That means that there's something. It's you. You literally you cannot believe what you're seeing. Yeah, it's a bit like the one where your eyes pop out. Eyes pop out of yes. Exactly. You are surprised by the thing you see. So, Mr. Duncan might might uh, see his mother tomorrow. He won't, uh, but he might. And uh, somebody, no, well, somebody might say, what a lovely watch. And he would say, I got that for my birthday. I could hardly believe my eyes when I opened the present. When I saw this watch, I could hardly believe my eyes. That's it. So when we go today, when we go today at four o'clock, a lot of people will be upset because we'll be going. <laughs> and uh, so we could say that there won't be a dry eye in the house. Oh, very good. Not a dry eye in the house, which means that uh, it's usually used uh, in a theatre situation. In a theatre when everyone's watching a play or a film and it's got a very sad moment in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody starts crying. OK, very sad. And, and the expression you use then is that uh, when everybody came out, there was not a dry eye in the house. Everybody was crying and upset. So but in the house doesn't necessarily have to mean a house or a theatre. It could mean the world of people watching you. You could say there's not a dry eye in the house. So it doesn't have to mean literally in a house. So that's that one. Can people still see me, Mr. Yeah, Duncan? Yeah, one more. OK. Uh, ah, right. How about this one? Yeah. Sounds good to me. I, 
Eyes are bigger than your belly. Eyes are bigger than your belly. Okay. So if you say your eyes are bigger than your belly, it means that you uh, you have too much food than you can actually eat. Yes. So so you've put too much food on your plate. Yes. Or or you order too much when you go to a restaurant. Mm. Uh, you put too much on your plate. Your eyes are bigger than your belly, so your stomach can't hold all the food that your eyes think it can. So you 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 put lots of food on your plate because you think, oh, it it looks great, but you can't finish the meal, so you have to waste the food, and then you will say, I'm sorry, my eyes are bigger than my stomach. I'm going away now, and I'm going to come back with a surprise. Oh, okay. Well, I've got a surprise. Got to be quick. I've got a surprise because this is what Steve bought me today. So I'll let you do. Let that. me just show you quickly. So this is what Mr. Steve bought for my birthday, and I was so surprised. So there, for those who are interested, they were asking, Mr. Duncan, show us the watch. So there it is. That's what Mr. Steve gave me for my birthday this morning. I was so surprised. Coming up next week, we have something special because we will be going to the beach next week. So there you can see a little glimpse of what we are doing next Sunday. So next week, we will have a look at some of the video footage, some of the sequences that we filmed during the week, during our trip to the coast. So all of that coming next week. And now I am wondering, I'm wondering what the surprise is. Mr. Steve has a surprise for me. And there you can see Steve and myself walking along the beach. That will be coming up next week. So I hope you will join me next Sunday. Don't forget also we will be here. We'll be here together on Wednesday as well. 10 p.m. UK time for those who are wondering I will put the times on the screen right now live English every Sunday 2 p.m. UK time and every Wednesday 10 p.m. UK time late and live I hope you will join us for that lots of things oh my goodness <laughs> Oh, surprise, surprise, Mr. Duncan. Happy birthday. <laughs> oh, my God. Happy birthday to Mr. Duncan. Let's oh. hope it doesn't set off. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't set off the uh, the, the uh, smoke detectors in the house. <laughs> and this is for me. This is just for you. I couldn't find enough candles to put on it. Uh, that added up to your age no. so uh, I've just put those on and you've got to obviously blow them out and make a wish okay well <laughs> that, can, can I have more than one wish I you weren't a, expecting that were you Mr. I, I, I was not I, I'm, a, I'm a little bit um, <laughs> wow it's it's not very often that I'm speechless <laughs> I don't know how you kept this a secret I don't, I don't either <laughs> it's I, been in the kitchen all the time. I'm not, I'm not sure if to blow the candles out or just to push it into Steve's face. I'm not sure. What a horrible thing to say. I'm so surprised. <laughs> you know, sometimes I, I, I don't like surprises, but that's amazing. Thank, I'll hold it. Thank you, Steve. Look blow the that. candles out and then we can we can wish all our... Count to three. OK, I will count to, th to three. One, two, three. <sighs> Oh, I don't make a bit more effort, Mr. Duncan. I need more puff. How is that? Hooray! That, that final big puff. Did you make a wish? I did. I made three. I'm, right. Normally you get three wishes, don't you? No, only one. Oh, okay. At your age. Let me just see if the wish came true. No, no, it didn't. Oh, well, maybe next year. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Have we got time for another word? No, we'll end on that note. Shall I think we? <laughs> that's it. I think we are coming towards the end of today's live stream. Let's have a look at the live chat before we go. Oh, my goodness. Steve, you you have really surprised me there. <laughs> you never fail to amaze me sometimes. <laughs> there we go. Oh, dear. Mr. Steve is extraordinary, says Maria. 
<laughs> I, I, I would agree with that, definitely. It's a lemon cake. Oh, and I love, to know. I love lemon cake. And I put that little band round it, did you see? I'll that looks that great. There. It says happy birthday. It says happy birthday because it is your birthday. Wow. Don't eat it all, Mr Duncan. It will. will. Make, it will make you fat. <laughs> it's a lemon cake. Lemon, lemon cake. <sighs> that sounds nice. It is coming up to four o'clock. We will be going soon, although we, we might have an extra five minutes, Steve. Because, really? Because I didn't start until five past. Yes, so, you can't you cheat your viewers. So we might even have a, about another couple of minutes. Oh. So would you like to read out another word? Do or you want a piece of or, Shall I go and cut some cake? Oh, let's have some cake. OK. OK, then. OK, don't be too long. <laughs> Thank you very much for all of your messages today. I, I, I really, really, really feel very, very humble. Sometimes when you're doing this, you think, oh, my goodness, there are so many nice people out there in the world. And I am lucky enough to know one of them. And by that, I mean Mr. Steve. So thank you very much, Steve, for that absolutely gorgeous thank you very much now steve is cooking cutting he is cutting some cake it's not easy to say that let's take that off put that on your head mr duncan i can i can put this on my head and i shall cut you a piece of cake i am the birthday boy live it's my birthday yes so there we go I'm cutting you a piece of cake, Mr. Duncan. OK. Oh, I see. <gasps> Can I eat the candle? <laughs> you... Can I eat the candle? No, that's yours. <laughs> oh, this is mine. Okay. <laughs> I'm having this bit. <laughs> oh. Well done. You see, I don't want him to lose weight, really. I want him to put weight on. <laughs> so eat it all, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> Next year when you see him, there won't be room for me. I didn't know you, you were a chubby chaser. There won't be room for me. A chubby chaser. Would you like to explain that uh, phrase to your viewers before we go? No, I would not. I think I've just eaten some of the candle. I think I've just e I've eaten one of the candles, by the way. Mm. This is nice cake. It's from our local bakery. Mm, this is lovely. Thank you very much to Catherine's Bakery. I hope you don't mind us indulging ourselves. <laughs> I'm always berating Mr Duncan for eating live because I think it's very rude. But oh my, I'm, going, I'm going to stand here now and eat this whole cake. No, you're not. I'm going to take it away. I was joking, but we will be eating it all later. I'm not Unless eating. someone wants to come round. I'm not eating this, it's been in your and, mouth. Uh, and help us. Yes, don't eat that bit. It's been in your mouth. I haven't been to the doctors, I need testing. Right, one more word, because uh, it's not all about fun and frivolity. This is about teaching your pupils uh, something new. And that's what we're going to be doing. Okay, one, one more. One more. Uh, have we had, what about mind's eye? Mm. Mind's eye. Explain. Mind's eye. This is where you're trying to visualise something in your head. So you're trying to visualise something in your head. You can't see it. So you describe it as, as, as what it would appear in your mind's eye. So say, for example, you're planning something. Mm -hmm. you, might be, you might be planning a party for somebody. You don't know what it's going to be like exactly, but you plan it in your mind. You can see it. In your mind's eye. You visualise. So it's just basically you're visualising something. So uh, that's what you mean by your mind's eye. It's well, just it, something you imagine. In Indian culture, of course, they, they, they believe that you have a, a third eye. A third eye that can see. So maybe that's, that's for a very similar thing. So you can, if you're planning something and, and then it all works out uh, like a party... Uh, for example, and uh, and then it all goes all very well, and somebody says, "Oh, congratulations! How did you plan all this?" And uh, and it all worked out so well. And you you said, "Well, I could see it all in my mind's eye." I can't, I can't believe Mr. Steve bought this watch for my birthday. I I'm, did. I'm now bankrupt, Mr. Duncan. I know. I think so. <laughs> uh, so good job. Your birthday isn't for another twelve months. Forget That's... Christmas. That's your present for Christmas. 
and birthday all <laughs> rolled into one forever forever it's time to go it's not made of gold thank you very much to all those who have been on the live chat thanks a lot to sergio francisco rosa jessica yes Carrie. jessica says it, you imagine how something is gonna be yes okay marta alamgia thank you very much yes the cake the cake is delicious and i have had one of the most wonderful days of my life thanks to steve and also you as well for joining in what a what a wonderful live stream this has been it's time to go we'll have one last look outside oh because the weather is not looking great today we've had rain it's it's a bit gray but here in the studio everything is super duper and now it is time for us to go thanks steve thank you oh uh, you've got your birthday hat on. <laughs> i've still i've still got my birthday hat because i'm the birthday boy don't you know you are and hey. we will see you later all right Ta ta for now, everybody, and see you on Wednesday. Thank you, Mr. Steve. Bye. Bye. Bye, Steve. You I thought you were fading me out. I will push Steve off like Bye. this. Bye. Bye. He's gone. Steve has gone, and so will I. Thanks a lot for watching. This is Mr. Duncan on his birthday say, saying thank you very much for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will enjoy the rest of my birthday. See you on Wednesday, 10 p.m. UK time. This is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of the English language saying thanks for watching. And of course, you know what's coming next. Yes, you do. Ta-ta for now.